Hey everybody, Mike here. Welcome back to the channel. So it's a quick project today. At least I hope it's gonna be quick. In the last month, I've had my stand-up freezer in the house go down twice. And that's resulted in me having to deal with scrambling, loading up food into coolers, getting it over to my parents' place to try to use their freezers until my freezer is back up and working again. So with that being said, we have taken it upon ourselves to start a new project. This here is my old workout room that I haven't used as a workout room in some time now. We went ahead and converted this over. This is gonna be our freezer room now. So I've moved both my freezers that you see behind me here into this room that used to be out in my garage, which is actually kind of a plus. It's freed up some space in my shop now. It's probably a good idea to have all these out here in this room anyways, it stays a lot cleaner in here. I've got a new freezer on the way. It's gonna be going right here on this wall. Uh, I actually showed up yesterday, but it looked like it had been mauled by a bear when they got it out of the box. So hopefully I'll have that here within the next week or so. In the meantime, I just had these uh, citrus show up from Macrio. We're gonna give these a shot and see if these will help kind of prevent me having an issue with my freezers again. That way I can kind of stay on top of it before it come, becomes an issue. But, uh, I ended up picking up this here. It's got a hub and two sensors. And then I ended up picking up an extra sensor as well. That way I've got enough for all three freezers once that third one shows up. Let's go ahead and see if we can get these set up on the workbench here real quick and then I'll move them into the freezer room. Whatever is in my hand works as a knife, right? Okay, so. We got, so we got our two centers here. Here's our hub. What other goodies we got? So what I'll probably end up doing is, I've got my network upgraded finally at the house. I've got pretty decent Wi-Fi, and actually I've got a wireless access point just on the other side of my shop wall now that's from this freezer room. We're probably just gonna keep the hub in there for now, see how this works. Move that around if we need to. I'd like to actually have it in the house because it has up to 130 foot range. And the hub is supposed to go off an alarm if the sensors ever fall out of parameter. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna leave that sensor in there because I don't have that third freezer yet anyways. So this is supposed to email you and send a push notification to your phone should your freezer go outside of the parameters that you've got set. I hate to have to rely on just that one thing. So if I can actually hear this thing go off as well, that would be a plus. All right, so here we go. Now there, you got your antenna here. That just screws on the back. Okay, so that's set up. That's good to go. It looks like you can mount this on the wall as well. Two probes for the sensors. That's our charge cord for the unit. So get that plugged in here. What I really liked about these sensors, I looked at several other ones out there as well. I wasn't real keen on putting the whole sensor in the freezer to where it could potentially fail. So this one here, you just mount this to the side of the freezer. It looks like it's got these little Velcro strips here that you can just stick to the side. So I'm okay with that. I like that idea a little bit better personally. And then the other nice thing about these two is they've got a two year battery life. It's got that charge port here that you can just plug this in and recharge it when it needs done. But it's nice knowing that you don't have to worry about that for around two years at a time. So you're not out there having to charge it every month. That's that's pretty handy. Now this thing is gonna monitor these freezers 24 seven. That I'm looking forward to as well. Take a second to go through this user manual here real quick. It says I need to download the Macrio app, so let's do that. Go ahead and turn this dude on. So let's turn on the hub. Push the button down for five seconds, so we're gonna get that done real quick. And then you gotta pair it to Bluetooth. Oh, gotta do a login, so let me do that real fast. Get you guys hooked up on my screen here so you can see what I'm saying too. See if we can figure out how to add this. See if we can add a hub. Click here to link a new hub. Go Wi-Fi, hold the button down for five seconds. One. Our little light turned blue, continue. Like we're just waiting for it to say congrats here. So we'll see, hopefully it'll pop up here in a minute. One hour later. After about an hour of frustration trying to figure out how to make these things work, I finally got it figured out. I don't know why it worked that way exactly, but it would not let me set this up on wireless for some reason. So I tried setting it up on ethernet because you're supposed to be able to do that as well. And it didn't want to let me do that either. I was just about ready to throw in the towel. And for some reason I tried Wi-Fi again. The only way I was able to get these to work was by connecting it to Wi-Fi while having my ethernet cord plugged into the back. The minute I took the ethernet cord out, it would quit working. Don't ask me why. I'm going to call support and find, figure, try to figure that out myself. But just keep that in mind if you decide to go with these sensors. I don't know if it's just me or something I was doing wrong. That was my experience getting these things set up. So I've got one sensor set up so far. I wanted to go ahead and test it and see how it was going to work. I've got another one here to do. I'm not going to set up that third one until I get my other freezer here in the, in the room. You can see on here, I don't know if you can see this on the screen or not. I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and screen record this. This is the frigid air freezer right here I got set up. And it's right now, it's reading at, looks like five degrees at the moment. I don't know if it's not acclimating to the freezer yet. It does show, so if I go into view more, I'm able to see, I've got a graph on here. I can go by day, by month, or by year and see a graph of all the te different temperatures that it goes through. So I've got a history that looks like it's gonna be pretty useful. I do have parameters set up on this as well. So if I go up here to the settings and then I look at the temp alerting, I have that turned on. 
and I set it for now anyways until I do a little more research to find out what the best parameters for this is. I've got this set up to negative between negative 15 degrees and 15 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm, I'm shooting for as close to zero as possible at the moment. So we'll see if that thing levels out if I get to zero or not. I've also got it set up to do beeping on the hub. I, I was able to get the hub to beep while it was still above the, the temperature parameter I set. It doesn't shut off, it seems like, until you kill the alert. It sends you an email and a push notification as well. So that's all set up and working now. I wanted to go ahead and add another sensor to this thing real quick. So I figured I'd show you how that worked out. See if I can get this figured out again. Go up here to the plus button. I'm gonna add, this is an ST5 sensor. So I'm gonna push that there. Now on the bottom here, where you would charge this at, there's a little button here on the bottom. It requires like a, a little paper clip basically. So we're gonna go ahead and hit, this is the hub that I wanna use. And I'm gonna push this little button right here. Hold it for just a second. It immediately pops up. Go ahead and click to add, add. And it looks like we're all set. So now I can go into this sensor. Go ahead and give it a name. So let me go in here to settings. We'll go ahead and plug in our probe here as well so we can get that thing set up and start monitoring temperature. So the alias name, we're gonna name the freezer what by the brand. So my other freezer that's in this room is a Kenmore. So we're just gonna name it that for now. Confirm. Looks like my battery level is 100%, signal's 80%, so we're good there. I'm gonna leave temp alerting off for now. Uh, just so I don't have to sit here and listen to that thing beep until it gets down to temp. Let's go ahead and get this thing set up in the freezer. See if we can get this thing settled down here. I already got this set up and ready to go. So I'm just going to kind of let this dangle in here about, I don't know, six or so inches below the seal. Let me get that right about there. Shut the lid. Let that sit on top for now. All right, let's walk back over to the iPad now. We can see what the temperature's doing. So it looks like my Frigidaire dropped a couple more degrees while we were setting up that one on the Kenmore there. And my Kenmore is down to 42 degrees. So that'd probably take it about 10 minutes or so to get that temperature probe acclimated and get it down to temperature. And then I'll set that push notification. So this will be pretty handy, I think. Hopefully be a little bit more peace of mind instead of just relying on the freezer. Any of you that had freezers at all know how soft that beep is. And with this case out here, we're in, the, in my shop in this little room. The only time I'm out here is when I'm getting meat. So it could be a day or more before I even knew that freezer was down. So I'm really hoping that these sensors will help me catch an, an issue before it becomes an issue. And even if I have a freezer go down, I can get this meat swapped over to a different freezer or get it over to you know, my parents' house or something like that. That way I don't end up losing meat. But we'll let this thing sit here for a little bit longer and I'll catch back up with you here in just a minute when this thing gets acclimated. So my first freezer's down to negative 1.3. That's good, I'm okay with that. And then my Kenmore is down to four degrees. We'll see if that drops any more, but it's still within my threshold that I'm gonna set up. Okay, let's go into my Kenmore here and we'll get our parameters set up. So we'll go up here to the cog wheel. We're gonna go to temp alerting, turn that on. Set our negative to negative 30 and bring our max we want it to to negative 15. I'm gonna set my delay up to two minutes. We'll see how that works. Give you a little bit of a buffer just in case the sensor has a glitch. That way I'm not getting an alert and freaking out while I'm at work. So we'll set that to two minutes for now. Hit save, should be good to go. All right, so next thing I wanna do here, let's get the sensor set up real fast and get this stuck on the actual side of the freezer. So I'm gonna go ahead and put, that comes with these little Velcro strips like you see here. Let's go ahead and get that set up. I'm gonna stick that on the back like so. Pull my adhesive off here. Why are these things always so hard to get off? I feel like I fight them every time. There we go. Okay, and we're gonna stick this right here on the side of the freezer. So that dude's stuck on the side of there like that. Let's go get this other one done real quick. Velcro on there. That dude's stuck right here on the side of this freezer. That about does it for the freezers. I'm gonna let those sit for a day and let, let them populate some data. And then we'll hop back on here one more time and take a look at that together. And I'll let you know what I think of these things so far. All right, fast forward here. This video originally started on Sunday. So it's been uh, roughly five days. I have a little bit of time to populate some data on these freezers. Let's go ahead and pop back on the iPad here real quick. I'll pull up the app. We can take a look at these temperatures together real quick and I can kind of show you these graphs. So I got my app pulled up here on my iPad and I went ahead and got my third sensor hooked up. That new freezer is supposed to be showing up here in just a couple days. So I've got that ready to go when the freezer does get here. Let me get it moving. But you can see on here, I got the three freezers all here, all set up on the screen. They're all named to whatever brand freezer they are. I'll have two Frigidaires here soon. So one of them is labeled just a little bit differently so I know them apart. If I click on one of these graphs, this is my Kenmore freezer, which that thing's, I bet that freezer's pushing 20 to 25 years old is, is my best guess. If you click on this view more and click the graph here, you can see where the freezer temps are by day. We're going anywhere between, looks like negative two degrees and negative 4.9 degrees. So there's about two degrees of fluctuation between when the compressor kicks off and on in the freezer, which I think is extremely good. The two degree variance is, you know, back and forth when it's cooling off. Uh, and that way it kind of shows you too how often the thing's cycling as well. And then if you go into month, and I'll have to go to November since we just started a new month, shows you the highest and lowest that, that that thing's ever ran. November 30th, it got down to almost six de negative six degrees and it's no warmer than negative 1.3 degrees on that freezer. If we go into that other one I've got, Frigidaire, view more, 
There's the graph for that one there. If I go into month and November. So that one cycled between negative 0.4 and negative 4 degrees on that freezer. This is going to give me a great peace of mind being able to know all my freezers are in here. And just in case I don't come to them every single day to check on them or get something out of them. Uh, I'll know that all those freezers are working. I'm not going to come out here and have a big disaster on my hand. Hopefully this kind of helped clear, clear up some questions you guys might have had. I couldn't really find a lot of information on these when I went searching for it. So I kind of wanted to create a video for you guys. Just kind of give you an idea of what I've got so far. For my initial impressions after using them for about a week or so. so hopefully you guys found this helpful. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Have a good one.